Hello everybody. It's time for another weird video about top 10 lists, where we make top 10 lists out of weird things. So in the last top 10 video, I said I wouldn't do another one of these, but it was so well received that I decided to give it another go. Talk about positive reinforcement. This time, today's top 10 is about the best parts of Super Adventure Box, a holiday event that happens once a year in Guild Wars 2 typically in the month of April. But why are we flying by this weird mystical toilet in Lion's Arch? Because inside weird things are stolen ideas and treasure. Let's begin. Number 10. The first thing you are greeted with upon walking into the Super Adventure Box is what would be described as the lobby. This is any player's first look at what the event has to offer. And it is nothing like the actual game they play. Imagine the whiplash you feel going from this to this. It's like a retro fever dream. Once your eyes are well adjusted to the assault of high vibrant colors and pixels, you can see the denizens of Super Adventure Box just running around. This place serves as the main hub for the event and periodically starts fun little challenges around the area, like races and platforming. A nice appetizer as our number 10. 9. Super Adventure Box, the official novel. Written by our girl, Bonnie Kundera. Kundera? Kandara? Kundu I, I don't know how to pronounce that name. The once apprentice to Snargle Goldclaw himself. Literature. Surely she got tired of Snargle smut. Oh so my. she moved on and rode at greener pastures. You can find this book below the lobby. All it takes is finding the way and a little bit of platforming. But the real reason why this is number nine isn't because of Bonnie or Snargle. It's because this is probably the closest thing to Super Adventure Box lore we're gonna get. Storm Wizard? Lord Vanquish? A Yeti beheading? I didn't know Super Adventure Box was gonna go this hard. Number eight. References to appease your nostalgia. It's a no-brainer that this event serves to tickle the old gamer and the retro nerd. And what better way to tickle them than fill this event with references from a bygone era? We have Zelda shops, we have Zelda hearts, Zelda health potions, Mario continue coins, game over screens, Shigeru f***ing Miyamoto is even an NPC here, as an Asura named Moto, anyway. Canonically, he even created the Super Adventure Box. Pretty fitting for the real-life guy who basically created our childhood. And if it wasn't quite enough on the nose for you, even the kidnapped princess in the story of the event is named Mia, whose resemblance is like Moto, but with a wig. Mia? Moto? Get it? Ah. Seven. The Dark Forest level is probably my favorite level in the entire box. Just think, Tangled Depths, but in pixelated form. Unless you hate Tangled Depths. Then just think Donkey Kong 64, I guess, I don't know. But something about the darkness and foreboding nature of this retro jungle is very relaxing to me. Yeah, sure, you can easily get lost here. But that's the fun! Finding your way and exploring! This place is an adventure! It's got monkeys, giant trees, lily pads, crocs, frogs. It's a jumping puzzle dream come true and a great platforming level to boot. Not too easy, but not too hard either. I've had my fair share of good memories traversing this area with my guild, even when battling King Toad. Speaking of which, six. King Toad and the Storm Wizard. Both bosses are some of the most fun you could have in the box. Be prepared for a fairly challenging fight. King Toad doesn't mess around. He hops and he ground pounds. Dodge or jump over the shock waves. Don't get tongue punched. Jump on the lily pads, but watch out. They disappear. Feed the Toad the bad things that beat his butt. All right, this boss may not be complex to figure out. Really, you just watch his tells and manage the pads. And for the Storm Wizard, you gotta jump around the moving platforms and dodge crazy-ass lightning bolts and deflect, uh, hand beams? 
Eh, I'm sure Bonnie can make sense of it in her lore book somewhere. But all these mechanics and execution make for a pretty fun boss battle. And it gets even more chaotic with friends. Five. What kind of extrinsically motivated gamer would you be if you didn't check out the rewards for playing Super Adventure Box? For completing achievements and collecting things in the event, you can exchange for retro game themed weapons. I am pretty partial to these guns. Melee weapons are cool and all, but the guns really sell the retro aesthetic in my opinion. Not only do they look fun and cool, but they also make retro game sounds. Pew pew pew. Show off to your friends or annoy the hell out of them. Do what you will. Just remember to have fun. Four. The raft ride over at the waterfalls level. You know, the one with the bears. The falls, the logs. I don't know these names by heart. The whole level itself is a blast, but nothing beats this raft ride. I hope you don't have motion sickness, because we're going into overdrive. Activate the slip space engines. We're going Mach 5 speed. Defend the raft. Don't fall off. <laughs> what a thrill. I don't really have much more to say than that. It's an adrenaline inducing ride and one that sticks with me as one of my fondest memories of this game mode. Again, even better with friends as it gets more chaotic. Three, the infinite continue coin. Yes, this is a gem store item. Yes, you would have to swipe for it or exchange gold for gems, but it's a godsend for tribulation mode players and people who are just straight up awful at platforming. The infinite continue coin is self-explanatory. It gives you infinite continues, meaning you don't ever have to start over from the beginning of the level. You just keep starting at the checkpoint, even after getting a game over screen. At this point, you run on patience. It's almost a requirement if you are going to try for the hardest content in the box. I highly recommend it as it'll save you a trip to the mental asylum, maybe. And it makes the event that much more enjoyable without having to worry how many times you're going to mess up and having to look at how many lives you got left. Two! Finally, yeah! Victory is ours! Whoa, with our now, the journey continues with a silver adventure box. Man, they sure don't make them like this anymore. Remember when they used to go really hard on the game trailers back in the day? They went all out. This was incredible. I remember reacting to this a couple of years ago when I started the game, and I was awestruck at how goofy it was. It also showed how much passion they had in the game. Not saying they don't have any passion now, but you gotta admit, this was a lot more hype. This commercial made me feel nostalgic, and it's not even a real commercial for a real-world product. Also, probably one of Ritlock's most badass moments ever. That's why this is well-deserving of number two. Heh, <laughs> it could have been number one. I actually had an internal debate with this and the next one. One. Last, but not least, depending on who you are, Tribulation Mode. Love it or hate it? It is the hardest mode in Super Adventure Box. This will test your mental fortitude and your patience. It takes a certain level of stubbornness and an iron will as strong as Tida Covington's door to take on this challenge. Think I want to be the guy Gaiden or any of those bullshit hard games that's popular with streamers. You know the ones that bring about primal rage and clip-worthy reactions. That way? <laughs> this is the mode that makes the infinite continue coin feel almost mandatory. Nothing will prepare you for this. The slightest error means death. This mode will likely end you harder than Balthazar ever could. If you thought the Chalice of Tears jumping puzzle was hard, that's a cakewalk compared to this. This mode is a one and done for me, and I cleared it. I never want to see this place ever again. I can't go back. I don't wanna. Please, I don't wanna go back. I don't, I don't wanna think about it. 
<laughs> so why is this number one if it brings so much pain and misery? Well, this might sound masochistic, but there's a sense of relief about withstanding something so hard. Oh my. And being able to finish. I suppose this is how Souls gamers feel. Sometimes you just gotta beat it to get it, man. And there you have it. A kind of weird top 10 list of the best things in Super Adventure Box. If you guys enjoy this type of content, be sure to share this with your friends, your dog, your choya, whoever. Like the video, comment, yada yada yada, YouTuber things. It all helps with the algorithm. I make these pretty irregularly though, as I work on other types of content. I will look into expanding this idea onto other games I play though, as I do want to keep things fresh. <clears throat> Genshin Impact. <clears throat> If Guild Wars 2 is your thing, or anime games is your thing, or anime adjacent games such as Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail is your thing, then consider subscribing to the channel for all that stuff. Also, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash vanillabean117. Same handle. And as always, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and be kind to each other. I'll catch you later.